Capital and revenue expenditure is a complete misnomer, really. It's really not the right terms, because capital, basically, as we've looked at already, capital means contributions from investors, from shareholders, or if it's a sole trader, the uh, sole trader of the business, if it's a partnership, the partners in the business, that's basically the owner's investment in the business, and revenue is sales revenue, in other words, turnover. Now, unfortunately, these terms here are used completely incorrectly, but basically as slang, to talk about the difference between expenditure, that's cash going out, that's going to give you a benefit of more than one year, and basically which is going to give you a, some sort of benefit in the current year only. So in other words, basically to support revenue expenditure is there to support current year revenue, and capital expenditure is non-current assets, something that's going to give you a benefit at some point in the future. Now, capital expenditure, therefore, means that we're saying debit asset, and revenue expenditure means that we're saying debit expense. I think it's pretty obvious that most of us would really prefer to say debit asset rather than expense, because assets feel good, and expenses do not feel good. Expenses is something that make you poorer. So therefore, unsurprisingly, there are quite a few accounting standards here that regulate this because I think it's probably fair to say, particularly in a large company, the emphasis or the desire is going to be to slightly creatively recognise something as an expense, uh, sorry, correction, as an asset, when really it should be an expense. Also, tax authorities are going to have rules on this. Um, they quite often actually going the other way around. For tax purposes, people are more likely to want to treat something as, as a current year expense rather than as an expense over a number of periods because that reduces the cash flow out of uh, tax in the current period. So what happens for the financial reporting to shareholders and what happens in the financial reporting to tax? Kind of the incentive to, to kind of create it the wrong way around actually pulls you in the opposite direction. For tax, you want to treat everything as an expense straight away. If you're the finance director of a listed company, you're probably going to be in that job for a few years only because you'll move on to bigger and better things. So you really want to take all of those debits and treat them as non-current assets because that way, during your reign as finance director, you get to produce better profits. So unsurprisingly, IS16, which is the accounting standard that covers this, has quite a lot of rules that stipulate whether or not something is going to be possible to treat it as capital expenditure, again, in other words, as an asset, or revenue expenditure, in other words, as a current year expense. Okay, now assets eventually wear out with the exception of freehold land. So anytime you look at an asset, what you're looking at is a future expense. Now, this is uh, a friend of mine recently bought a very expensive car and uh, actually showed this to me and said, isn't it wonderful? And I said, well, you see an asset. I, I just see a whole lot of future depreciation. Um, and I think that kind of illustrates two things. First of all, the fact that all assets are ultimately going to become an expense. And the second thing is that I'm a total and utter pessimist. But anyway, let's take a look at this scenario here. This applies IS-16. You need to know that this IS-16 rules exist. You certainly don't need to know that it's called IS-16. I really don't imagine any multiple choice question asking you to identify what uh, accounting standard something is regulated by. Okay, now the golden rule you're asking here is whether or not this is going to give you any sort of benefit in the current year or if it's going to be more than one year. So, for example, buying a new van, okay, well, that's capital expenditure. In other words, we're going to treat that as a non-current asset because a van doesn't get scrapped at the end of the year as part of your New Year celebrations. It's something that's going to be there for a long time. Okay, paying the annual road tax, which is, uh, enables you to use the van, I would suggest that's revenue expenditure. Now, you might actually have a bit carried over at the end of the year. So let's say, for example, you bought your road tax, which it says here is annual road tax. That's an important word because of the fact that it's going to give you a benefit of no more than one period. Some of it might be prepaid at the end of the year. That's a different thing. Capital expenditure is basically a non-current asset. In other words, it's something which intrinsically is expected to give a benefit over more than one calendar period. It might be that some expenditure actually gives you a benefit slightly over your accounting period, but you're still expecting to use it up in total within one year of when you actually paid the money. Okay, installing air conditioning in a bar. Well, I would say that that's going to be capital expenditure. It's a non-current asset because of the fact that air conditioning lasts for more than one year. Replacing the strip lighting with romantic soft lighting. Okay, and the question is, does this create any new asset? And an asset is something that generates a new income stream. The answer is yes, it does. And there's some interesting tax rules on this one that you'll come to later on, by the way, um, which is basically the fact that you can probably charge more in a restaurant that has nice soft lighting rather than a restaurant that has lots and lots of very bright strip fr flickering lights. So therefore, that's going to generate more income and therefore it's an asset. It's going to be something that's going to be an asset for more than one period. So therefore, it's a non-current asset, it's capital expenditure. 
Okay, installing new partitioning within an office, same story. Okay, that's capital expenditure. You expect that's going to increase the efficiency of that office space, and people tend to be able to work better if they've got their own private spaces um, or partition space within, within an open plan office. And it's going to give you a benefit for more than one period because it's going to actually last more than 12 months from the date of installation. So therefore, it's an item of non-current asset capital expenditure. Fixing a hole in the roof, I, I would argue that that's going to be revenue expenditure. In other words, it's a one-off expense. Now, the hole in the roof, um, fixing the hole in the roof, admittedly is going to, that whatever you plug it with, is going to be there for hopefully more than 12 months. But the point is it's not actually generating any new possible income stream. If you imagine, let's say, for example, this is your... Um, your, your restaurant with, uh, with its nice soft romantic uh, lighting instead of the flickering bright blue strip lighting that you had before and you've got a hole in the roof, well, you know, that's going to put customers off. So fixing that hole doesn't actually generate any new income. All it does is support any income that was already there. Basically, anything that's maintenance expenditure Anything that's maintenance is always going to be an expense, even if it's going to generate a period for more than one, to generate a benefit for more than one period, or physically be there for more than one period. I think that's kind of a certain measure of common sense. You know, if, for example, you imagine your own home and there's a hole in the roof and you fix the hole in the roof, you don't kind of finish that day thinking, I got better off today. You just kind of think, that was a bit of an annoyance. Um, I've now fixed the hole in the roof, and so I'm back to feeling as good or bad as I was before. If you, by contrast, basically take um, a building and build a new floor on top of it, that's a different game. That's actually a, created a new asset completely. So therefore, that situation would be an asset. Okay, if in doubt, maintenance expenditure. Maintenance is basically anything that allows something to be as efficient as it was before you did this. It's nothing that's going to make it any better than it was before. Okay, finally, a new 25 cents teaspoon for a staff kitchen. Now. That, I suspect, is going to be around for more than uh, 12 months. If I think about the teaspoons and so on in my kitchen, sometimes it kind of I find it quite remarkable, actually, how some of, long some of those things have been there. Um, it's only going to be over one year. Okay, Things like teaspoons are going to kick around for a very long time, getting progressively more nasty and brown with every single year that goes by. The only thing is, it's only 25 cents. So, in theory, it should be capital expenditure. But in reality, it's just not worth it. Now, each company or each business is going to have its own rule on this but the phrase would use is de minimis limits. IS16, IFRS doesn't set any de minimis limits but basically it's an accounting policy choice within each business to say although really that does meet the definition of capital expenditure so we should treat it as a non-current asset and as we'll see later on depreciate it every year and treat that as an expense through profit or loss it's just not worth it. Now in practice I'm not sure that this is going to come up in the exam because they'd kind of have to give the answer almost in the question and make it so obvious because it's a multiple choice question. But it's certainly something that you're going to come across in practice. It's certainly something you'll see as a first thing understanding the accounting for a business and non-current assets. One of the first things you need to determine is what are the day minimis limits for capitalization for treating something as an asset. Often tax rules have a day minimis limit as well and most companies in my experience actually use the local tax rules as the day minimis limit for capitalising assets because it just makes life a little bit easier to have the same rules as far as you can. Okay, that basically is the rule. It comes up a very great deal. It's actually the basis of very many accounting standards and very many uh, issues and we'll come to these later on. Things like, for example, website costs. Are website costs just an item maintaining your relationship with the customer or are they something that's going to be something new? The answer is a bit of both. More of that later on in your studies.